there's one thing that bro dozers, pre runners, and muscle trucks all have in common. They're all boys. And you wouldn't know it if it weren't for the veiny. <laughs> oh, God. And you wouldn't know it if it weren't for the big, veiny testicles hanging off the back of them. But did you know that this ridiculous accessory spurred an insane, decade long battle involving phony aliases, constitutional debates, and even death? In today's episode, we're going to dive into the product's rich, scandal-laden history and see how truck nuts have remained a niche industry to this day. And stick around to the end to see the next gen of these nuts. These nuts? <laughs> Speaking of nuts, we'd like to thank Manscaped.com for sponsoring today's episode. It's the perfect sponsor for the perfect episode, if I'm being honest. Doesn't matter whether we're talking some big nuts on the back of a big old f***. Look guys, it doesn't matter whether we're talking some big ol' nuts on the back of a big ol' F-450 or your own. Hygiene is important. You guys know that I'm a big fan of my Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0. I don't want to think about it. Ooh, sorry James. In all seriousness, the Lawnmower 3.0 is my favorite. It's built with advanced skin safe technology, which means no more nicks or cuts in those ever so sensitive nether regions. And it has a cool LED light for when you're working under the hood during those late night trim sessions. You know what I'm talking about. Guys, it's important to take care of yourself and you can start doing that by taking pride in your nuts. I really like this product and I think you will too. So visit manscaped.com slash donut to receive a special 20% off discount. That's manscaped.com slash donut for 20% off plus free shipping to the US, Canada, and Australia. I don't even know what you call your nuts down under. Support the companies that support donuts so we can keep making cool videos and I can make more ads that make everyone uncomfortable. Now let's get back to the nutty grutty. Ever since truck nuts existed, there's been an argument over who invented them. On one side, you have the no-nonsense John D. Saller, who before truck nuts started the first website where you could order personalized military-style dog tags. And on the other side, you have David Ham, a renegade with some serious Tiger King vibes. Now, it's important to note that handmade truck nuts existed before Ham or Saller each started marketing them commercially. Soller even told of a woman in the Nevada desert who crafted custom truck nuts as early as the 1980s, but insists that they were smaller and in a different style. I'll take his word for it, but what exactly does a different style of nut mean? Ugh. This is already getting really weird. So the notion of who invented truck nuts has more to do with who was the first one to mass produce them and sell them commercially. Neither Ham nor Soller had a patent for truck nuts. The product is unpatentable. Hence, why so much of their drama over the product played out in the real world and online rather than a courtroom. Let's start with Soller's version of how truck nuts came to be. He's out one day, four by fouring with his buddies, doing hill climbs when someone yells, Yo, Ernie, show him you got some balls! <laughs> <laughs> and that's when Soller has a light bulb moment. Balls for your truck! He teams up with a manufacturing company called Tomville Plastics and starts producing commercially available truck nuts. The product is developed in 1999 and his website, bullsballs.com, goes live in 2000 with the tagline, the original truck nuts. But Ham says that's not how it went down at all. Ham claims the idea came to him in the 80s after he saw a custom pair hanging from the back of a truck at a desert rally. And uh, something I want to point out real quick, seeing something isn't the same as getting the idea for something. His website goes up with a tagline, the original nuts on the net. Ham's online presence is harder to track than Soller's because he had a bunch of websites with similar names selling the same inventory. There were bumpernuts.com, trucknuts.com, amongst many others. For clarity's sake, I'm just gonna refer to Ham's online store as your nuts with a Z.com, which is the name of his current site, even if it had a different domain at the time in question. There's a banner on Ham's site that reads, quote, purveyor of premium novelty testicles since 1997. So that should settle it, right? David Ham came up with truck nuts first since he's been selling them since 97, right? Well, wrong. There's no actual proof Ham had his site up this early. In fact, domain registrations show that his site wasn't actually live until 2002. When asked about this discrepancy, Ham claimed that he had used a long gone AOL site until he switched over in 2002, but refused to offer any proof. So it's a little sus. You guys have to see these websites. 
Imagine the looks you'll get with these bad boys dangling in front of mama's face on the freeway. Soller's BullsBalls.com is about as chic as a truck nuts emporium can be. They've got an in-your-face hot pink logo, a charming, quote, testes monial section, and a CAPTCHA that requires you to solve a basic math problem to prove that you're a human, which feels pretty next level. I do have some notes on their t-shirt, though. Off-center Comic Sans? Have you no shame? Ugh. I'm almost more offended by the font than the veins on these nuts. That wasn't fun to say. Incidentally, off-center Comic Sans is how I would describe the essence of David Ham's website, yournuts.com. <laughs> you can tell this guy likes to have a good time. He spells nuts with a Z, his color scheme is all of them, and he's leaned real hard into embedded videos like this one. Hey, hi, how you doing? I'm David. I want to welcome you to yournuts.com, where we feature premium novelty testicles. Pretty boss move to have the garage door lift up to reveal a second garage door. That's my dream, actually. Now, truck nuts aren't the only examples of drivers treating their vehicle as an extension of their body. Other anatomical vehicle accessories have cropped up over the years. You got monster trucks with arms, VW bugs with eyelashes. This driver even made his car talk. How may I be of assistance? But none of these caused a stir quite like truck nuts, which bounced onto the political scene in the 2000s at the heart of a debate over obscenity versus free speech. Were truck nuts too pornographic for the public eye, or were they just a vainier form of expression protected by the Constitution? In 2007, Maryland legislator Leroy E. Myers Jr. proposed outlawing truck nuts, which he called, quote, vulgar and immoral. In 2008, Virginia legislator Lionel Sproul Sr. tried to ban them too. Both of these attempts were unsuccessful. That same year, the Florida Senate actually passed a $60 fine for displaying truck nuts, but it didn't pass in the House. The strangest incident has to be in 2011, when a 65-year-old South Carolina woman was cited by the police chief for having truck nuts on her pickup and what became a $445 ticket and the coolest grandma ever. Where do I fall in this debate? You know, I'm not really sure. Do I think truck nuts are kind of tasteless and uh, gross? Look, smooth truck nuts, I can accept. Really veiny and like wrinkly balls on a truck, that's just over the line. Why would you want that? <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> yeah, I want a really saggy set of nuts on my truck. I just can't, I can't abide by that, dude. I can't understand that. <laughs> ah, no, man, I don't want any smooth nuts. Give me those real wrinkly things over there. <laughs> I want. <laughs> Maybe there's a threshold of how nasty your nuts can be in your truck. Maybe we can legislate that. Maybe it's like your car has to pass emissions, right? Uh, maybe your truck nuts should pass a, uh, a nastiness threshold, I guess. You know what? I think that's a reasonable, that's a reasonable compromise, I think. I think I put too much thought into this. Politicians had been trying to shield their constituents from the depravity of bumper nuts, but their actions backfired. Instead, all of this political hubbub had the Streisand effect and sales increased, which only heated up the rivalry between Ham and Soller. Up to this point, their beef had been pretty much limited to an exchange of angry phone calls and emails about who was the first online retailer, but things reached a boiling over point when David Ham launched all the nuts with a Z.com. Ham had sold his products under various nut-themed sites before, but all the nuts is different. Rather than just sell his own line, Ham wants his site to be the one-stop shop for all damn nuts, <laughs> including Soller's trademarked original Bulls Balls. Ham sets out to acquire some of those for resale. First, he tries to be an authorized seller for the product, but Soller's company rejects him. Despite not being approved, he placed a bulk order through Soller's sites and sent a payment. Ham claims that they took his money but never delivered his Bulls Balls. Soller's camp, meanwhile, says they knew exactly exactly what Ham was up to and returned the money as soon as it arrived. Blackballed by Soller, Ham had to find another way to get his hands on the balls of his enemies. And what better way to do that than go undercover? David Ham adopts the alias Bozzy Willis and drives across state lines to Tomville Plastics in California. 
Ham tries to buy a pair of Bulls balls from Chad Tombill, owner of the company and friend of Soller. Tombill calls Ham's bluff and sends him away empty-handed. Undeterred, Ham goes behind Soller's back, buys some Bulls balls through a separate authorized seller, and put those on allthenuts.com. Savage. He went savage faux them nuts. Some online posts also indicate that Ham would list Soller's original Bulls balls on his site to ride the coattails of their web traffic, then lure in customers, then claim the product was out of stock while urging them to buy some of his own products instead. Ah, the old bait and switch there. Soller finds out about all this and makes impassioned posts online, like one titled, quote, Truck Nuts, A Quest for the Truth. He bashes Ham and his dirty tactics, calls his products cheap and inferior, and posts a comparative chart showing how none of the other imitation truck nuts out there measure up to his. Not long after that, mysterious one-star reviews start slamming BullsBalls.com, and I quote, Do not buy from BullsBalls.com. Instead, there are a few sites that give excellent service and prices such as AllTheNuts.com. I wonder who wrote that one? Similar posters refer to Soller as a, quote, puny little girly man and a keyboard coward and an incorrectly spelled looser, which is an insult you really want to slam dunk for full effect. Despite these posts being anonymous, David Ham later admitted to Vice, quote, I'm sure I wrote several of them. Soller retaliates with his own posts, accusing Ham and his crew of defamation while referring to them as, quote, rude, crude, liars, and sociopaths. Even going so far as to include an entire checklist for sociopathic qualities. Damn. For years, these two went back and forth, dragging each other online. Their magnum opus of internet dragging can be found on Ripoff Report, which is a site for consumers to complain about fraudulent business practices. And let me tell you, it is wild. What you can only assume is Ham and Sol are going back and forth, sometimes anonymously, sometimes not. Over the course of a year, Ham accuses Soller of price fixing. Soller accuses Ham of defamation. Soller sends Ham a cease and desist letter. Ham sends Soller a cease and desist letter. At one point, Ham requests $10,000 for some reason, while Soller starts referring to him and his people as, quote, the unscrupulous Ham gang. Ham does some digging and exposes Soller as a convicted felon, which Soller owns up to in the comments, admitting to a shameful domestic violence charge from his past. Might I remind you, this is all happening on a consumer reports website. It even looks like Ham impersonates Soller at one point when he writes, this is the latest posting to myself, John D. Soller, owner of BullsBalls.com. Stay tuned for further updates regarding the pending legal action against me for my criminal behavior. But of course, no update came. This is classic boomer behavior. Despite the two truck nut factions remaining pitted against one another, the online tirades seemed to fizzle out. Soller stepped down due to failing health and passed the truck nuts torch to his longtime business partner, Chad Tombill. His faithful webmaster, John Beeman, unfortunately passed away, followed by Soller in 2014. Ham not so gently commented on their demise, saying, quote, I read that both his web guy and Soller had passed away, and I thought, wow, they're both dead? That's amazing. Can you imagine saying that on record? What a jerk. But even in death, the truck nuts legacy that Soller helped create lives on. Today, there are many varieties of truck nuts available. Everything from baby bloobs to big 16-inch bazoinkers. <laughs> We've all heard that the bigger your truck, the smaller your junk, uh, which is the same reason I assume all clowns have huge c <laughs> But size isn't the only factor when selecting your truck nuts. You can opt for brightly colored bulls balls or a sack that's more reflective of the human condition. Isn't it strange that all the flesh colored truck nuts are white flesh? Let's have some diversity in our truck nuts. I want some inclusive truck nuts, for God's sake. For truck nuts with even more pizzazz, you can get them rhinestoned, glow in the dark, chrome, Ammo. There's even music devoted to truck nuts, like this absolute slapper from a band called Finger Pistol. It's actually pretty good. And truck nuts aren't just for your truck anymore. On Ham's site, he touts them as the perfect accessory for wheelchairs and tricycles. There are bike nuts, mini truck nuts, keychains, and you can already order a futuristic sack for your Tesla Cybertruck.
These cyber truck nuts, like the truck nuts before them, quickly became embroiled in copyright controversy. Retailer Cybertrucknuts.net listed these puppies for pre-order on their website, but were soon hit with a complaint by online user RegisX7, who claimed the design appearing on their website was actually his. He had uploaded the full 3D CAD file for his design on Thingiverse.com last November with the ability for other users to freely download it and print it, though not for commercial use and not without proper attribution. In a very ham solar tone, a rep from Cybertrucknuts.net responded to Regis X7's copyright claim by saying, quote, I'm under the impression he's jealous of the success and is trying to get a cut of this pie. Yeah, man, what a dick move wanting a slice of a pie that you baked. You're right, you don't sound like a moron at all. Luckily, this truck nuts drama didn't play out as brutally as Ham and Sollers. After some initial back and forth, the two parties reached a very cool agreement. Cybertrucknuts.net can use and sell Regis X7's design as long as they donate 10% of all profits from it to Movember, an organization dedicated to men's health. Movember focuses on male issues like prostate cancer, testicular cancer, mental health, and suicide. They're big charity event happens every November where the Mo Bros grow out their mustaches to raise money and awareness for the cause. So I guess we should probably donate some money then. Well played, Regis X7. Oh, I uh, just, just got a text. Uh, my truck nuts are about ready. I, I had a, a, a specialist 3D print them for me. Let's go see how they turned out. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope you liked it. It was pretty goofy. Had some goofs and gaffs. Follow Donut Media on all social media at Donut Media. Follow me at Nolan J. Sykes. And um, check your nuts. Your lug nuts. Make sure they're they're torqued. Be kind. See ya. <laughs> These nuts. <laughs>